You're watching CNET, the digital domain. Now on CNET Central. Welcome to Beyond. Cults go online and the whole net takes the heat. We've got a full report. It's a perfect route for cults to go to, to both bring in money and to look for new recruits. Netscape and Microsoft square off in the latest round of the browser war. Hari Srinivasan gives us the blow-by-blow. The Star Wars hype continues with a slew of new games from LucasArts. Plus, Desmond's underground answer to the new DVD players, and Sophie introduces us to ActiveX. And Disney's new partnership with Microsoft is a blast for kids and the best of the web, right now on CNET Central. From the number one on-air and online information source for the digital age, this is CNET Central. Hi, I'm Richard Hart. And I'm Gina St. John. Welcome to CNET Central. Last week's mass suicide in Rancho Santa Fe has left many questions. We may never really know why some members of the Heaven's Gate cult took their lives or exactly how big a role the internet and computers played in what happened. Since the tragedy, there have been many news reports about the dangers of the web. Many people working within the internet industry charge that these reports of cults online have been grossly exaggerated. But others aren't so sure. In fact, highly respected experts in the field of cults and new religions say that the internet is cult-like by nature and will continue to attract individuals considered to be prime targets for self-made cult leaders. Welcome to Beyond Human, the last call. Experts say the man who called himself Doe, Marshall Herf Applewhite, fit the bill of a classic self-proclaimed spiritual leader. I'm Doe. And they say he used the internet and his website to help him. A lot of these very bright, technically proficient people, they may have been socially inept and socially starved, but they, I'm sure, had been, in a sense, enticed through the Internet, where there was some sort of calling card, perhaps fairly subtle, that they responded to, and they were roped in that way. Tallbrook works for the Spiritual Counterfeit Project, a think tank in Berkeley, California, that follows trends in cults and new religions. I'm going to hit gurus. Brooks says the net can turn anyone into a virtual guru, and that more and more cults are starting to use their websites to draw in new recruits. You know, it's a great way to sort of leave your calling card hanging in cyberspace saying, this is me, here's my URL, hit it, we'll network you to other pages, and by the way, we're going to be in town physically in three weeks, and we're going to be given a talk. They're rushing you and they're saying, oh, we love you, we love you, come be with us, you know, this is wonderful, we're having this workshop only this weekend, if you don't come this weekend, it'll never happen again. Well, that's hogwash, I mean, the workshop's going to happen again. Yanya Lalich knows firsthand how cults recruit people. A former cult member herself, Yanya now works to get people out. She says the net is just one manipulative tool used by cult leaders to lure in new members. I mean, at some point, they have to make personal contact. I mean, as far as I know, cult recruitment only works by that personal contact, by me looking at you and sweet-talking you into coming along with me. If you do what I say to do, if you believe that I have the information that you need... Yanya says Applewhite could not have persuaded 38 adults to commit suicide through a web page alone, but that the sterile and orderly surroundings in which they worked to survive were a way of detaching them from reality so that they could die. If you think about it, it's isolated work where you don't have to be around other people. It's, it's fast money, it's good money, uh, and, and there's a lot of jobs out there, there's a lot of work. Initial reports said the cult believed there was a spacecraft approaching behind the comet Hale-Bopp, and that by committing suicide, or as they put it, vacating their vessels, they could join up with that alien ship and evolve to the next level. It turns out they're not the only cult with beliefs centered around UFOs. In fact, the Internet is filled with websites that deal with UFOs and aliens. And experts warn that with the new millennium coming, cult and cult-like activity on the net will heat up. 
There's a lot of information out there, and I think the, the counterpoint to all this, there are vast numbers of former members of these groups, as well as cult education organizations, uh, putting up information. And that kind of thing is very helpful, because then the person can maybe run into the cultic group and look over at the next link and uh, see that you know there's another side to this story. So it's also giving uh, our side, so to speak, that exposure to millions of people. And, and that's a good thing. And you'll find if you type in the word cult or cults at a site such as search.com, you're likely to find a long list of anti-cult sites as well. Lalich says that many people seeking help have found her through the World Wide Web. Thanks, Richard. Now, whatever you're looking for on the web, one thing is sure, you're going to need a web browser to find it. And the browser giants Microsoft and Netscape are in the process of releasing new versions of their software. So here to give us the lowdown is our own reporter, Hari Srinivasan. Thanks, Gina. In round four of this battle, both Microsoft and Netscape deliver much more than a simple browser. What they're offering now are large software suites that have begun to blur the distinction between your browser and your desktop. So those of us that are just used to a browser are going to find a lot more. First, Internet Explorer 4.0. You'll see differences on your desktop before you even get to the browser. For example, all your icons will be single click instead of double click. You'll be able to drag and drop these icons right onto the Windows Start Bar. If you right click the Active Desktop feature, you'll notice that Microsoft is taking the idea of wallpaper to a new level, allowing you to run everything from ActiveX controls to web pages right on your desktop. Not only is the suite uh, do everything you need on the web, but it starts to get into your operating system and make make your desktop, for example, look and act like it's on the web, which is pretty cool, actually, if, if, if you don't mind your, your OS being taken over by IE. Once you get into Microsoft's new browser, you'll notice that the keyword here is customizing. You can switch all the buttons around on the toolbar. You can subscribe to sites in your bookmark folder so the browser can update information as it changes, and even surf offline using pages your computer already has stored in its memory. Internet Explorer 4.0 also builds in the capacity for pushing information you decide on right to your desktop. They've also revamped search features by including a handy people search function and a new design which splits the page and offers compressed results. Microsoft isn't the only one reinventing their look. Netscape has a few new toys and tricks up their sleeve with Communicator. A new toolbar lets you flip between different parts of Communicator, reminding you that you're working with a whole new suite, not just a browser. Netscape messaging for news groups and email, Composer to begin writing your own web pages, Conference to dial across the web, and Collabora for intergroup communication. The browser itself has been redesigned to be much more user friendly. Netscape, for example, with the back button has a really cool thing where uh, instead of just clicking the back button to go back a page, you can do that or you can hold it down and it displays a list of everything that you've been to for the last session. The toolbars are all collapsible, giving the user more room to see what's important. You can drag bookmarks right onto your personal toolbar, and searching is even easier now, because all you have to do is type what you want into the location bar, and the search automatically starts up. And by supporting dynamic HTML, a language that helps web developers animate pages much faster, these browsers hope to literally change the way you see the web. So the big fundamental change in, in these products which is a trend that these, these kind of illustrate, is the change in computer programs from being uh, about the program, about the interface, to being about the information. Okay, Hari, these are some really interesting things, but just this weekend I spent hours trying to download this browser with so many bells and whistles and features, I don't think I'm even going to use them all. Well, I don't spend my weekends downloading browsers, but it is true, when you go to Netscape's site, they allow users to pick the type of browser package that they want because there are a lot of features that you might not use. Microsoft's isn't available yet, but they'll probably package it the same way. So you've got to check which bells and whistles you want before you press download. Good advice. And before you take the plunge on any of the new browsers, be sure to check out CNET's new section, Browser Central. I wish I had. We've brought all of our best browser-related information from all of our sites into one place. There you'll find tips, reviews, news, and free downloads. Coming up next, AOL goes international, and the Star Wars trilogy blasts its way onto your desktop. Net News is sponsored by IBM Solutions for a Small Planet.
In this week's net news, America Online is taking Japan Online, launching a Japanese version of its service April 15th. It's just the newest of AOL's international rollouts. AOL Japan will have the same features as the English version, but will have locally produced news and interactive programming. It'll cost $8 a month for three hours, four bucks for each added hour. Disney's adding to its online presence with a new web amusement park of sorts. It's a new pay service for kids called Disney's Daily Blast. Members of Microsoft Network can access the service for free if they're running Windows 95. It doesn't run on Macintosh yet. It'll cost five bucks a month for the general public. Daily Blast is aimed at kids age 3 to 12 with interactive comic strips, coloring books, games, and downloadable digital toys. Database King Larry Ellison says he's just the man to alleviate the troubles ailing Apple Computer. Oracle's CEO now has a reported bid in the offing to take over the company. Ellison set up an email box to get outside feedback on the potential takeover. He wants to know what you think about Apple's management and business strategy. You can email him at savapple at us.oracle.com. Legislators on Capitol Hill are up in arms over a looming technical disaster that could hit at the year 2000. They're asking federal agencies to investigate the potential damage of what's being called the millennium bug. It could cause some computers and household and commercial appliances to go haywire. The problem is some chips and software will misread the date 2000 as 1900, causing some systems to scramble. Congress wants to determine what can be done to avoid the crisis. Big news about those long-awaited digital TVs. Their shipment to store shelves has been delayed a year. Digital TV makers were planning on rolling out high-definition televisions by 1998. It's now postponed until 99 because the nation's TV broadcasters, such as ABC, NBC, and CBS, are now saying they will not air anything significant in digital before then. And most local TV stations are not expected to have their digital equipment until after the year 2000. To get more on these stories and stay up to date on all the daily developments of the digital world, you'll want to make sure to visit CNETsNews.com. Thanks, Richard. Now, keeping you up to date in this rapidly changing digital world is our job here at CNET Central, and that includes answering some of your most frequently asked questions or facts. And here with some of the answers is our own Sophie Formica. Thanks, Gina. Well, with all the new technologies appearing each week on the internet, it can get a bit confusing out there. And that brings us to this week's question from Garth Carl of Canada. He writes, what is ActiveX and how is it used on the web? Well, Garth, essentially ActiveX is a technology developed by Microsoft that enables programmers to create dynamic interactive web pages. And this is how it works. Developers pack tiny programs into what are called ActiveX controls, which are like tiny envelopes that contain special instructions for your browser. When you come across a page that's been activated, like this site by ImageFX, your browser reads the instructions in the ActiveX controls, then displays things like a scrolling banner or rotating text. Besides bringing text to life, ActiveX controls can do things like move shapes or animate characters. And beyond animation, some controls like Look at Me allow you to view another person's computer screen anywhere in the world. Not surprisingly, ActiveX works better with Microsoft's Internet Explorer browser in a Windows environment, but if you use Netscape Navigator, you can also download a plugin that lets you view some ActiveX enabled web pages. I should also mention that Microsoft has been in the news lately for security problems involving ActiveX, but they are addressing these issues and have already released some fixes. Now, if you're confused by any of the terms or technologies that are featured here on CNET Central, of course, we want to help. Yeah, that's right. Send your question to the fact file at CNET.com or through regular or snail mail to The Fact File, 150 Chestnut Street, San Francisco, California, 94111. And if you want to know more about ActiveX, head on over to CNET.com. You'll also find those Fact File addresses and each week's question and answer. Stay with us. Just ahead, Desmond shows us some new CD-ROMs that play movies right in your computer, if you know where to find them. And a sneak peek at the latest from the LucasArts. You're watching CNET, the digital domain. The Best of the Web is brought to you by MCI One. Life just got simpler. Are you searching for the nerd within? Worried others know more about the latest net lingo than you do? Well, we've got some sites that could change your life in this week's Best of the Web. Good times, Michelangelo, or how about data crime? Remember these computer viruses? You may have heard the hype and hysteria surrounding these cyber germs. 
But did you know these viruses were actually media scares or just plain hoaxes? Well, visit the Computer Virus Myths website. You'll learn more about such non-events and urban legends. You'll find stories, protection info, and learn the hard facts about all kinds of deadly computer viruses. And if you want to learn more about computer terms, then head over to netlingo.com. Alphabetized from A to Z, this site is your dictionary for internet terms. From the most basic lingo like what's a browser to the more advanced terms like what's hot plugging, you'll find lingo for computer users of all experience levels. Hey, if you want to be in the internet, no, this is the place to go. Viruses, Netlingo. If you like these sites, let's face it, you're a geek. So we know you'll enjoy this next one. It's the geek site of the day. Dedicated to geek culture, you'll find everything from Star Wars paraphernalia to archived info on programming languages only a geek could love. And out to expose the true geek in all of us, this site offers links to the Dilbert Zone and the Exploding Mac site. But most notable is the Nerd Test. You can take it and find out if you're truly deserving of geekdom. For more Best of the Web, hop over to CNET.com. This week's feature includes a site for moms who want to get online and a site teaching you CGI scripting. Thank you, Gina. You know, I'm willing to bet if you haven't replaced your VCR with some sort of digital video disc player yet, you're thinking about it. Well, guess what? Desmond Crisis is here from CNET Labs, and he says that you don't have to wait for DVD necessarily to play movies on your desktop computer already. That's right, Richard, and that's because there is MPEG encoded videos already available on CD. They've been available for a couple of years now. The cool part is, is they will run on your existing CD-ROM machine with uh, a Pentium 100 or a PowerPC, no additional hardware. Now, we have a movie here with Jack. Jackie Chan, I think this is Super Cop, right? Mm -hmm. And it's running on a Power Mac. Let's watch a scene here. No extra hardware. This is a video CD. Ooh. I hope they're just pretending. They always are pretending. Boys, boys. Things. All right. Now, this is a DVD player. This is a scene from an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, Eraser. Let's watch the DVD version of a movie. Pretty good quality, mm -hmm. too. And, uh, but Arnold has to use a gun. That's right. Jackie Good old Chan. American gun play. <laughs> this is his fist. All right, what's the difference here? First of all, this requires a special player. You can't just play it on an existing machine without putting in about 500 bucks. And the titles cost about $24. Yours is a lot cheaper. Yeah, that's right. This just runs on anything with some software in it that's a Pentium 100 or greater, or if you have a 386 kicking around, you can buy a card for about $100 or $200. And I couldn't help notice that your titles there have Chinese writing on them. Well, that's right, Richard, <laughs> and that's because they came from Chinatown, but they are only 5 to $15 a piece. Yeah, so if you're bargain hunting, it's, it's worth it. And by the way, there are lots of English titles available, too. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, for my extra money, and if I want to wait for more DVD titles, I do get a better picture. This is 640 by 480, That's right. right. And I'm stuck with 320 by 240, so he gets twice the resolution. The other thing is, if you, what it boils down to is if you want to wait and spend the extra bucks, mm -hmm. you can get DVD. If you're cheap like Desmond and want your movies now, you can get it. Resourceful, a Richard, resourceful. <laughs> and we can show you places online, CNET.com, where you can get some of these titles, both kinds of movies, uh, online and order them on the web. Desmond, thanks again. Without going to Chinatown. Now you have to change discs. That's I right. Don't. Well, As you may have noticed, Star Wars is back, and so far the trilogy has grossed over $225 million in re-release. Well, not to be left out of the action is George Lucas' software division, LucasArts. They're hard at work putting the finishing touches on some brand new Star Wars games for your PC. Without a doubt, Star Wars has made a triumphant return. Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, and the rest of the gang are shining brightly at the box office once again. Join me, and I will complete your training. But if the power of the Force hasn't grabbed you yet on the big screen, how about your PC screen? That's right, the folks at LucasArts are releasing some brand new games, all based on the Star Wars universe, but all with new original storylines. What we've always tried to do in, with the Star Wars property, um, generally with games, is to explore something a little bit different outside of what the movies do. Jack Sorensen heads up Lucas's software empire. You don't have to follow Han Solo, you don't have to follow Luke. You know, it's a big galaxy, so there's a lot going on, and there really is uh, no end to the, the number of unique stories we can tell. 
So what kinds of games will we find in this galaxy far, far away? Well, for starters, jump into the cockpit of a Star Wars gunner and experience the thrill of space combat in X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter. Along with stellar 3D graphics based on actual models used in the Star Wars films, you'll also find a souped-up game engine, full-motion video, and cutting-edge sound. But if an arcade space simulation isn't for you, how about a little strategy Star Wars style? Lucas's next game, Rebellion, takes place right after the first Star Wars movie ends. Choose to command the Dark Side or the Rebel Alliance and fight to control the Star Wars universe. You'll need to plan tactical maneuvers, gather resources, and deploy troops all in a real-time environment. And fans of LucasArts' desktop adventure series may want to try Yoda Stories. There is no try. Filled with short game scenarios and fun, easy-to-solve puzzles, this game is designed to be played under an hour, perfect for the gamer on the go. But probably the biggest game rolling out from LucasArts is Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2. This fast-paced 3D blast fest is sure to rival the likes of Quake and Duke Nukem. As Rebel Warrior Kyle Katarn, you'll explore over 20 3D texture worlds, all with a 360-degree field of vision. And with an arsenal of weapons at your disposal, including your trusty lightsaber, you'll fend off cantina creatures, stormtroopers, and other Imperial enemies. With all of Lucas's games, you'll definitely find the latest in graphics, design, and gameplay. But more noteworthy is an additional feature Sorensen says Star Wars fans have been begging for, network gaming. Just that aspect now of not just playing against a computer, but playing against your friends or people that you've never met before is incredibly exciting, you know, especially in the Star Wars universe. People have not had that uh, ability before. The Star Wars games are due out in the next couple of months, but if you need to feel the power right now, well, by all means, go over to GameCenter.com. They've got a sneak peek at the new Star Wars games, as well as tips, tricks, cheats, and how-tos for all of your favorite games. And, of course, the place to go for information about computers and the Internet is always www.cnet.com. This week, you'll find more info about everything you've seen on this show. Well, that's all for this week's CNET Central. Thanks for tuning in and logging on.